What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other viruses that could be a threat to you and even in some cases, animals. Yes, we're going to talk about animals today. So if you want to stay informed with what's going on, subscribe to my channel down below. Give this a thumbs up if you like the content. More that the uh, thumbs up we get, the more YouTube pushes the content out. And of course, hit that share button down below and share this with anyone you know. All right, we do have some news stories to talk about today. Then we're going to take a look at some Walgreens data, some wastewater data, and of course, some CDC and state data. We're a bit early today because I'm doing my day in reverse today. Going to have a busy day this afternoon, so I think. So starting off today, severe lung infection during COVID-19 can cause damage to the heart. Yes, we've seen study after study after study that shows COVID can cause heart damage. Now it's saying severe lung infection from COVID can be a big cause of that. So this is uh, something that's really interesting. If you want to read all about this, I did tweet this out. And it is on my Twitter, and I believe it's also... Um, going to be on Blue Sky. I don't think I put it on Blue Sky yet. I will make sure I try and get this to Blue Sky as well. All right, going on to this next story. This is kind of a story we may spend a moment on. New York City public schools lift five-day COVID-19 quarantine period for students. Let's backtrack a little bit. We know this started off in California, Oakland, and then it spread throughout California. Then the CDC went and did their thing. And now New York City is playing along. They're following along. Let's read some of this. New York City schools are no longer required a five-day quarantine period for people who test positive for COVID. The new guidelines say if a child gets COVID-19, they will have to stay home for at least 24 hours and be treated like other respiratory infections like the flu. You know, I constantly get comments saying, well, we need to take COVID like the flu. We need to take COVID like the flu. A part of me understands that. A part of me also says, well, no. Have you read any of these studies? There's constantly studies that are coming out that are showing that, no, COVID is not just like the flu. COVID causes much more severe long-term disease for many people, more than the flu. In fact, there was actually a study just for that that says long COVID is more severe than long flu. Let's continue on. School leaders say the child should stay home until they have had no fever without taking fever reducing medicine and when other COVID-19 symptoms are getting better. Let's pause again. There's data that suggests only 30% of people who get COVID have a fever. So what about the other 70% that don't have a fever? Yes, they can still spread it to someone. While the mandate has been lifted, health experts say there's still a need for those to proceed with caution when faced with a positive test. And let's just come down to this right here. If the child does test positive but doesn't have symptoms, they can be at school but must wear a mask at all times. Hello, anyone here of asymptomatic spread? And yes, the mask works, but you're not telling them what type of mask. N95 or better, or in a child's case, KN95 or better. Come on. I mean, this is just totally ridiculous. And how about cleaning the air? Yes, if a child has to go to school, that classroom should be required to be required to have clean air. You know what? That should just be a requirement whether they test positive or not because, guess what? Clean air plus masking can actually reduce the spread of these viruses. Not just COVID, other viruses that are viral as well. Moving on. All right, moving over to something that was posted to my website that we did not share, which uh, I just noticed the other day, which this is a fantastic uh, content right here. You need, you need to hear about this. This is not good. You know, polio virus, the virus that the, our parents, well, or maybe when you were a child, the, depending on the age group, in my case would be my parents, the polio virus that was around 50, 60 years ago. He, yeah, or maybe in this case, 70 years ago. Well, Sudan, the country of Sudan, is detecting polio in six wastewater samples, causing the Federal Ministry of Health to begin a polio vaccine campaign starting in April of 2024. This latest round of polio vaccinations, Sudan, 
will use the World Health Organization approved type 2 novel Oreo polio vaccine. So yes, this is really interesting. Polio, it's coming back to haunt us yet again. As we all know, when COVID started, there was a sense of, uh, ooh, should I use healthcare right now? I probably should stay away with healthcare. I could get infected. You know, a lot of people did not get vaccinated. Plus, COVID does wane the immune system as well. So low vaccine uptake in children, not just there, around the world. It really was a problem during this pandemic, which is still ongoing, by the way. All right. Remember when we said we we're going to talk about animals? Here's the story. U.S. has first instance of avian influenza in goats. Now, I was trying to find out which state this was in, and I was not seeing that. So, not seeing which state this was in, but hey, the first instance of influenza H5N1 is now being detected in goats here, right here in the United States. So, uh, yes, this is uh, rather interesting. We haven't talked about H5N1 in a while, but hey, I did a search on it. Sure enough, I found that. All right, yesterday, did not include this in the pandemic update. I did not see it till after the pandemic update. But two things, one, which I'll show you here, one which I don't have here. The CDC is now taking measles a little more seriously, and they're really raising the alarms that, hey, measles is really starting to go up. And take a look at this, 15 measles, Cases of measles has been reported so far in Chicago in 2024, so that is an increase. I believe our last update, did we not say it was 12? Or maybe it was 14? All I know is 15. It's gone higher in Chicago. I just read this morning there's now a new case being found with exposure, possibly, in California. So, yes, measles, it continues to spread. It continues to be a problem. All right, moving on to the data portion of our update now. And let's take a look at what is going on with air qualities. And we can see here, look in the southeast. We do have some yellows. We have some oranges that are popping up. We also have some uh, oranges, yellows, even a few reds in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. There is a, a weak storm system that's moving through the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast this morning. That could be the reason why that is showing up like that. And, of course, California, it'll eventually pop up here. California is continuing to have their usual problems, as is the rest of the West Coast. There it is. As you can see here, there are yellows out on the West Coast today. All right, taking a look at Philadelphia, 699 EMS incidents total for Tuesday. That's below 700. That's a number that we're really happy with. That is a good number. Taking a look at what is going on in Montgomery County, which we don't usually take a look at in Montgomery County at this time of the morning on the pandemic update. You can see there are 14 calls right now. Overdose, cardiac emergency, cardiac emergency, Cipopol episode, cardiac emergency, subject in pain, accident, fall victim, subject in pain. Yeah, quite a few calls are including a stroke as well. So that's not good to see. How about Chester County, Pennsylvania? Remember yesterday I said we were looking to see if we see an increase in sick person calls? Well, there's one right now, and there's also a stroke, heart problem, respiratory difficulty, and some other calls mixed in between. Of course, I do check on this from time to time today, throughout the day, even when we're not doing the pandemic update. I do keep tabs on both of these, so I'll let you know if I see an increase in sick person calls. All right, let's take a look at Walgreens. The national positivity rate this week is 15.4%. The prior week was 17%. That's a difference of down 1.6%. Total tests, 9,357. The prior week was 10,988. And you might notice that, hey, wait a second, weren't we just significantly lower testing last week? Yes, we were. But that was because a lot of states weren't reporting. And there still are states not reporting, but some came back, and that resulted in an increase in the number of tests being shown. Let's show a few more states today that we did not see yesterday, starting off with Maryland. 4.1% uh, positivity rate. Prior week was 14.4%. That's a difference of down 10.3% with testing down as well. So you're legitimately dropping at this time. 97 tests versus 139. I don't think we looked at West Virginia yesterday, so let's do that. 9.5% COVID positivity there. The prior week is 8.5%. Difference of up 1.1%, but testing. It's way down. 42 versus 71. I know we did not take a look at Tennessee yesterday, and if we did, I apologize. 21.1% is the positivity rate this week, 15.5% last week. That's a difference of up 5.6%. Total test, 407 versus 555. That's a significant decrease. Let's go up here to Minnesota. Let's see what's going on there. I'm seeing green. Green's a good thing. Minnesota this week, 9.6% versus 10%. That's down 0.4%, and their testing actually increased. 157 versus 100 and. 
30, so testing increased, but the positivity went down. That is actually a good thing. Current week for Texas, 17.3% positivity. The prior week was 18.9%. Difference of down 1.6%, but hey, testing was down too. 1,596, the prior week is 1,802. Now, some of you might have been wondering about Texas. Why doesn't data reports show Texas dashboard anymore? Texas ended their dashboard. I don't know how we would get an accurate count out of Texas. I tried and looked it up. Hey, if anyone has any link to anything, let me know down below. I would love to go back and show Texas again because, hey, Texas is a big state. Let's do one more state, then we'll do some wastewater. Uh, taking a look at South Carolina, 14.6% positivity this week. Prior week was 16.4%. Difference of down 1.8%. 240 tests versus 238. All right, let's take a look at a couple wastewater sites. We'll just do two today. And I say we should just go, oh, I don't know. Let's go down to Alabama. We haven't done Birmingham in a while, have we? No, Village Creek, Birmingham, Alabama. Let's see what's going on there. COVID, it's medium at this time and dropping. RSV is in the low category. That's good to see. Influenza is also low at this time. Influenza B, it's coming up high, but quite frankly, take a look here. It's really low. Yeah, it's, I don't know why it's as high. It shouldn't. HMPV, low at this time. Norovirus is actually now dropping. Mpox, there was a detection of that back in January 13th. And you can see hepatitis A, just a couple detections as of recently. All right, let's go somewhere out west now and see what's going on. Let's go out to Salt Lake City area, and we'll see what's going on in Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City for COVID, it's medium. And you know what? It is starting to rise once again for you. RSV is not rising. Influence A is low at this time. It's not, it says high, but we're going to go with it's low. Look at the chart. It's relatively low. Influenza B, same deal, low at this time. And HMPV did have a little bit of a rise, but now it's starting to drop. Norovirus had a bit of a rise. Now it's leveled off. And Mpox, not many detections of that at this time, except for January 13th. And there have been some hepatitis A detections. All right, taking a look at some CDC data now. And let's come over to hospitalizations here we are right here COVID emissions in the past week 13,391 that is down by 13.5 percent this will update again on Friday taking a look now what's going on with the latest variants and we can see here JN.1 leads the way at 86.5 percent JN1.13 lead is second at 9.5 percent taking a look at influenza because uh, why not people ask me why don't I talk about other viruses well, here is flu, you know, flu that impacts humans. And here it is right here. You can see there's still very high levels in Ohio and still high levels. of. We're still seeing quite a bit of red. But overall, there is a slow and steady improvement starting to happen in the United States. You can see District of Columbia, which is Washington, D.C. It's still very high there. New York City at this time is still high. But look at the West Coast. Minimal to low levels. It's dropping there. And I think it's going to continue to drop in most places. We may see a few random states that go up again because of post-St. Patrick's Day celebrations. All right, finally today, New Jersey. 66 out of 70 hospitals reported, 329 hospitalizations, 19 people on a ventilator. Let's take a look at discharges. They've had 53 discharges, and in the ICU, 55 at this time. In fact, let's continue on. I don't think New York State has come in yet, but let's see. Now, nothing out of New York State. It's the same number from yesterday. 412 positives, and yesterday they also reported that they had for hospitalizations, and I have to zoom this in. Let's see. They report for hospitalization yesterday. 699 in the hospital and 69 in the ICU. I would like to see New York State get below 50 at some point, or excuse me, below 500 people in the hospital at some point in April. I think it's doable, but we'll see. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. We'll have another update, I think, again tomorrow. We'll see. And if you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below and if you know anyone who needs to see these updates by all means share this with anyone you know thanks for watching stay safe everyone and i will see you all again next time have a fantastic wednesday